21 more Israeli soldiers were killed today, eight Israeli civilians. And but some young Nisan. Americans are there in the middle of this conflict in the Middle East. Let's go straight to Fox. At the age of 19, Michael Levin left the comforts of suburban Philadelphia to follow his dream. He joined the IDF, becoming what Israelis call a lone soldier. Dearest Harriet Mark, Elisa and Dara, I write this letter to salute the parents and sisters of the greatest hero I've ever known, Michael Levin, Zichrono Livracha blessed memory. I hope and pray that in these days of sorrow, you are beginning to find comfort in the knowledge that so many hundreds of thousands of people admire and look up to your son and brother Michael as the great Jewish hero he was. To many people, Michael was a role model and a hero. But to us, to our family, he was just our Michael. On February 17th, 1984, we were not only blessed, we were doubly blessed with the birth of Michael and Dara. We now had a beautiful family with Elisa, their older sister. It's a rarity that you find a picture of him where he's not having fun and he's not smiling. Where was I before the day that I first saw you love? People always ask me, where did Michael get this devotion, this love of Israel that he possessed? I think a great deal of it came from my parents, Celia and Lilik Solarsky. They're both Holocaust survivors and it had a tremendous impact on him. Hearing stories from my father and about my father, I think contributed to Michael's desire to defend the land of Israel. My father was a decorated combat veteran of the Second World War and Michael was named after him. Uh, Michael's Hebrew name was Melech, which means king in Hebrew. In high school, Michael went to Israel with several of his friends from Council Rock High School. And I really think that that was the changing point for Michael. He was in love with the land. He was in love with the people. I remember the first day he came to me and said, but I must tell you, after the year of Nativ, I'm going to join the Israeli army. For someone to come at the first day of the program and to like declare and say, it's, make a statement, I'm coming back to Israel to serve in the Israeli army, was really an exceptional thing. My papers are done. I'm making Aliyah to Israel. I'm leaving. He, he had nothing bad to say about Israel, which was just amazing because it's very hard to be a, a new immigrant here by yourself and to deal with Israeli bureaucracy and everyone complains. But Mikey, no matter what, he, he had that characteristic smile on his face and he'd say, well, you know, this and this happened, but, but I'm loving it here. He had been waiting weeks, even months, for his admission papers, which never came. So he decided to take matters into his own hands, went down to the admissions building, tried to gain entrance through the front door. He was stopped by two armed guards said to him, papers. He said, I have no papers, that's why I'm here. So he walked around the back of the building. He looked up at the second floor and saw a window open about three or four inches. So being at the back of the building, he found a dumpster that he pushed across the way against the building. He climbed on the dumpster, climbed up the bars of the first floor window, pushed the window open, tumbled into the men's room on the second floor of the building, found the appropriate office, walked in, the man says, next, Michael sits down. He says, papers. Michael says, I don't have any papers. He says, son, you can't get through the front door of this building unless you have papers. Michael said, what makes you think I came through the front door? And he told him the story of how he got in. And the man said to him, you know, I've been here about 20 years. You're the first person to actually break into this building to get into the army. He says, sit down, we'll fill out your papers. It's a dream come true, something I've wondered since I was a little kid. It's just. It's something no words could describe what it means to me. He's a good one. I saw him training. I know. We're working very, very hard, and I'm, I'm proud of him. Michael became very close friends with Gilad, who was his mifaket, a commander, when he was in basic training. There was an incredible bond between the two of them. You could definitely see that in their eyes. That's the truth, man. No pain, no game. You don't take the pain, you're not going to go into the best units. The last time Michael came home was for one of our closest friend's daughter's wedding. It was a great visit. I took him to a Broadway show. Then everything started in Israel, and he couldn't wait to get back. This is probably the last picture of Michael. 
It was about two hours probably before we went in. Well, I remember when we got on the bus before we went in, and uh, actually, I asked, if, I asked some, somebody that was religious if I could borrow his yam kippah to say uh, Shema Israel, and Michael just took his kippah off his head and he said, here, take mine, put it on, said Shema Israel. He looked at me and said, all right, you ready now? I said, yeah, I'm ready. And I give it back to him, put it on his head. של הכוח של מייקל, הם נתקלו ממספר מוקדים. כוח שלא נלחם ותפס מבנה, נערך בו להגנה, ובמהלך ההיערכות להגנה, לצערנו הרב, צרור של מחבל שנורה מחוץ למבנה, חדר פנימה דרך אחד הפתחים, פגע במייקל ופצע עוד שני לוחמים שהיו ממש סמוכים אליו. the equivalent of our Arlington. And it was a difficult decision, but not for very long. How could we not honor his last wishes? This kippah, knowing that this is what Michael wore into battle when he fell. This is just, this is like having a part of Michael and holding him. Pulled up to the cemetery, my first reaction was that of disappointment because I saw hundreds and hundreds of people outside the cemetery and cars and taxis everywhere. And my first thought, my very first thought was, great, there must be five, ten, who knows how many, fifteen funerals going on at one time. It's going to be crazy in there. Little did we know that everyone, everyone that was there, was there for Michael. The crowd was huge. Could have been in the thousands. And people came from all over the country. Secular, reformed, orthodox, black hatters, for some reason, Michael's story, the ideals that he stood for, the sacrifice captured the hearts and the minds of people all over the country. They say there is a land, a land drenched in sun. Where is that land? Where is that sun? Where is that sun? Where is my son? My son is a hero in heaven. I'm so proud of you.